So good morning, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Richard. Today I'll be presenting my CITES seminar about the topic Development and Control of an Automatic Marine Research System. My supervisor is Dr. Ali. Uh, before we start, let's take a look at the video of my project. to study the kinematics and robotic desktop automation system. Um, such system requires a desktop robotic arm with sufficient payload to lift up a coffee cup that's around 500 grams of weight. And also it needs a multifunctional end factor that is able to press buttons on a coffee machine, also to lift up the coffee cups. Um, a coffee spoon system must be designed for repeatable coffee making operations and also a user interface design is designed for users to select different products. This leads to the research question of how to integrate all the hardware components, software components, mechanical design, and mathematical models all together to perform this coffee making operation. So for the hardware, the mechanical parts of the robot is from the robot and company. And so I designed this, I made this controller to control these robots. The robot has six degrees of freedom, um, and the, five, the first five joints are made out of safety motors, and the last joint is controlled by the servo. On the left hand side of the controller are the five safety motors drivers that are used to control the first five joints. Two power supplies are used. The five volts power supply is used to control the control pins of the drivers. The 24 volt power supply is used to power up the drivers. On the right hand side, the SD card is used to store the trajectory of the robotic when it's moving. This includes the robotic angular rates, the angular acceleration, and also the angular positions. The Arduino is selected as the microcontroller for the, um, the robot. And for the user interface design, there are six push buttons that are used for, for selections of products. LCD is used for the display, and the Arduino the Wi-Fi window is used as a controller. So the system can be divided into two subsystems, the user interface system and the robot system. So the user can select different products using either the iPhone app or using the push buttons. The data is sent to the robot controller through the I2C protocol. Um, the, the robot controller controls the motion by, by controlling the stepper motors and the servo. Uh, since, all the stepper mo since all the stepper motors are open loop, the starting position of the motors are unknown. So in this case, five limited switches are installed on the robots. Uh, the robots at the start, for, uh, the each motor at the start will rotate to its limits, which trigger the limited switches. And this is the starting point of the robots. This is how I do a calibration for my robots. 
Kinematics are important when doing the path planning for the robots. Uh, for kinematics, it's the process of finding the anti-factor pose, anti-factor pose, uh, by given in the um, joint angles of my robots. Um, the process of solving for kinematics by is start by attaching different coordinate frames on the lengths of the robots and using the DH parameters as the convention. The transformation matrix defines the relationship between one frame to another frame. And the overall transformation matrix can be calculated by multiplying the individual transformation matrix altogether. The empty factor pose can be calculated by multiplying the base frame coordinates by the overall transformation matrix. Inverse kinematics is the process of finding the joint angles based on the desired uh, and empty factor pose. The method of solving inverse kinematics is called the inverse of Jacobian method. Um, Jacobian method relates the joint angle velocity with the empty factor uh, velocity in the condition space. So this method is a numerical method, and by moving the angles, by moving the current angles a bit by bit, the empty factor pose will eventually converge to the empty factor to the desired pose. Here the error is the difference between the current pose and the desired pose, and the goal is to minimize that error. Um, delta Q is a small change in angle that moves the empty factor closer to its desired pose, and the new delta Q can be calculated, the, the new angle after updating can be calculated by adding the current angle with my delta Q. And the new computed pose can be calculated by taking the four kinematics of the updated angles. By looking through all these steps, the current and dependent pose will converge to the desired pose. On the right hand side, it shows that the robots converge to the desired pose in four iterations. So what trajectory planning is done by setting a number of waypoints, which is the points that the robot must pass through when moving. When moving. Uh, by moving between two waypoints, there are two movement commands. One is the joint movements and the linear movements. For joint movements, the trajectory is arbitrary, and majority of the movements in my operation is using the joint movements. Linear movement is when the movement has to be in a straight line, so when the robot is pressing the cup, of this pencil button or picking up the cup. Uh, to avoid co collision, I use a linear movement in this case. So for joint movements, each joint follows the linear speed profile. So each joint accelerates to the maximum velocity before it accelerates back to zero velocity. Um, by adding a constraint of each joint must start and end at the same time, the maximum speed of the joint angles and the acceleration can be calculated accordingly. And linear movement is planned by doing linear interpolation between the starting angle and the end angle. Um, so the line segment between the path is divided into k number of knots. So the goal is to determine the uh, using inverse kinematics, the, the angular position and angular velocity for each knot can be determined and then program into the robots. So for the software developments, I'm using the robotic case software for simulation. Robotic case software that I use for offline programming and simulation for industrial robots. My robot is not an industrial robot, so the interface between the robotic case and my um, Arduino controller needs to be created manually. So starting by, in, by importing the SOLIDWORKS model into my robotic environments, I'm able to set a number of waypoints in the software environments. And the MATLAB will calculate the corresponding um, maximum velocity of acceleration for, for moving between two waypoints. And finally, the Excel stepper motor library allows the Arduino to move the stepper motor according to the speed I I want it to move. <coughs> um, so that was for the joint movements. Uh, for linear movement software, 
then you start and go between for, the, for each waypoint is broken into MATLAB. And MATLAB will calculate the inverse kinematics for each knot, and that will give us the joint angle and joint velocity for each knot. Um, this data is sent to the Arduino, and using my custom Excel library I made, I'm able to program set the motors to move according to my linear movement motion. So in conclusion, I've derived a more concise spoiled kinematic solution which is mentioned in the thesis, and also I came up with a combined method for solving inverse kinematics. Um, I've successfully implemented my trajectory planning algorithms for my copy operations, and also studied the system engineering design in my project. I've also successfully made copy based on the user selection, and in the future I'd like to study how to do obstacle avoidance with computer vision system, and also how to reduce cycle time when operating my robots. Thank you for listening.